Did you ever think the government of the United States of America was going to get in the way of you being with your husband? I do think ultimately we will be together. Right. How it's going to happen, I don't know. I'm hearing reports from other colleagues saying that if you're an Iranian national, your chances of getting a waiver are uh, pretty bleak. We will do what we can to see that the visa is adjudicated as soon as the administrative processing is complete. When did you receive that letter? Over a year ago, August 2017. Wow. Go out to any person in the United States after they get married on the day after their wedding day and say, hey, guess what? There's a 2% chance that you and your wife can live together maybe in two years from now and see how many people would say, oh, that's great. Sign me up for that. I'll take that all day long. When I was a Washington Post correspondent in Iran, I didn't plan on falling in love. But I met and married an incredible Iranian woman and now we're here in the United States building a life together, just like my parents did. Americans now have the right to marry whoever they want. But under President Trump's travel ban, they're no longer guaranteed the right to live here in the United States with their foreign-born spouse. I was traveling in Iran for my 30th birthday, and I found myself in a, in a kebab restaurant. And I looked over and I, I saw this um, young Persian woman kind of laughing and, and, and smiling at me. She basically came up to me and said, you know, hi, my name is Mona. I'm a master's student in chemistry. Where are you from? Yaya and I met on Instagram. He was so cute and so sweet. And so I finally answered him and we started messaging a little bit on Instagram. But then it kind of turned into good mornings and um, starting our day off together, or my day and his night. I, I really thought I would never see her again, and it wasn't until I returned home that I opened my email box and I found an email in there from Mona. We ultimately decided to, to meet each other in, um, in Istanbul, and that's where we sort of began to at least develop a, a, a connection there because it was like, honestly, her life wasn't that much different than mine. Aziza. Oh, baby, I just see it here, missing you. <laughs> I miss you too. This man is across the world. He's 7,000 miles away from me. And what business do I have talking to him? You know, why? Out of all the men in the world, why him? But um, I didn't stop. <laughs> how is Shiraz? How is Iran? How is my family? Oh, I love your family. And Iran is Haiti Kashing. <laughs> we decided to get married because we were meant to be together. We are just so much of the same person, and our differences make up the other. <laughs> Happy birthday, honey. I will not be with you on your birthday. Mona is the most important thing to my life, and I just said, that's it. We're going to get married. Getting married, it was so amazing. And then you get home, and it's so anticlimactic <laughs> because I don't get to return with him. He didn't get to come home with me. Hi, Uncle. Yeah. How are you, honey? He's like, good. How are you? He started looking into immigration and everything it takes to be together permanently as husband and wife. The, the idea was that Mona would go to school, she would earn her, her PhD in Kingston, Ontario, and then we just always continue to think, okay, pretty soon you'll, you'll have your PhD, and then we can, we can start planning our future together here, here in the United States. I'm establishing new vetting measures to keep radical Islamic terrorists out of the United States of America. We don't want them here. This isn't specifically singling out people with extremist ties and banning those individuals from coming into the country. This is a blanket ban of all individuals from specific countries. Lower courts struck down different versions of the ban but the Supreme Court ultimately sided with Trump. The president now has the authority to blacklist countries he deems a national security threat. 
Because I cover Iran for the Washington Post, I've been flooded with messages from Americans separated from their husbands and wives, terrified they'll never be together. So I decided to go out and see what it looks like when bureaucracy dead ends the relationships of Americans in love. Jason, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Thanks so much for having me. How you been? I've been okay. It's just a very alarming, uh, frustrating situation. Yeah. Um, because no matter what she does, no matter what she accomplishes, no matter what she does in her life, she can't change the fact that she was born in Iran. And that's what is so frustrating because I, as a businessman, as an engineer, I'm used to solving problems. And that is a problem that cannot be solved. We've been together for nine years. I'm 39 years old. What, am I going to wait till I'm 42 to, to, to finally begin a life with my wife, to finally start thinking about, about having children? My life with Mona is being held up over bureaucracy. Hello. Hello, Cyrus. R Ricky Smith. Yes, hi. Hello. Cyrus, uh, Jason, Jason Rezaian is here as, as, as well from the, the Washington Post. Hi, Cyrus. How are you? Hi, Jason. Um, I had one question for you first. You know, we've heard a lot about this, this possibility of waivers. We reached out to the State Department earlier this week, uh, and, you know, in their written response to us, they said that, you know, every application is automatically put into uh, the waiver uh, process. Are, are you aware of, of anyone who, who's gotten a waiver? I'm hearing reports saying that waivers have not been successful. Either they've been denied outright or they're still pending. And it's really tragic because this is such a routine matter under our immigration law. Clearly, a U.S. citizen like you should not be deprived of uniting with your spouse. Do you think that when the powers that be, if and when they start to realize that good Americans like yourself are being affected by this, uh, that they might have a change of heart? I just feel like so misled. I, I keep being told that there's ways and that, oh, he's your husband, he, sh he, sh he can come here, he should be allowed. And it's, I, I feel like I'm being led down this rabbit hole that's just, Another? It's just so emotionally taxing because you get your hopes up, you know? Yeah. You think that, okay, well here, I can apply for this waiver and we fit and everything's perfect. We are perfect for the criteria and then you hear nothing again. You're just still in that process. I've lived my whole life here. My dad is a veteran. This is my home. And the fact that I might actually have to leave it because my husband's not welcome here under this ban is, it makes me angry. How is it possible to carry on a marriage at this great distance? When, you know, when we don't communicate, there is there is nothing. That's all that we have. He's a whole support network that I'm not allowed to be with. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I know, I feel like our family is, is missing one of its members, and it hurts. It's not like, it's just Olivia, take her away, or they move away somewhere. He wants to be a part of our family. Just thinking about all of it, and just the gravity of the situation, um, and just how unfair it is. It's like a nightmare that lives with me, inside me, every second of my life, and I cannot let it go, even for one second. If you get to that point where you're in front of somebody who can make that decision, right, could wave a magic wand, what is it that you would say to that one person who's making the decision, knowing that there are thousands of other people going through the same thing? That person, whomever has that decision-making authority, needs to understand that families are being separated, and there really isn't a discernible benefit to that. I'm not contacting anybody now. I'm not calling senators because when senators call me back, they send me the exact same email I receive every time. And so I feel at this point, I why waste my time and keep sharing this heartbreaking story that is so emotional for me and so hard to repeat over and over and over again to people 
for nothing. What's the point? We still don't live together and I still don't get to wake up with him or say goodnight to him and share my day with him. My entire life has been put on hold.